inventive, quirky doom. Anything and everything goes in the book. Malachi is kind of this ranged king of a character. He, he buffs artillery lines and he's really good at striking from a distance. Let's sit back, have a tea and a biscuit, and watch the fireworks. Caught between two worlds, the Slayer and Glorious Death, and the engineer who loves to tinker, Malachi McKyson is truly a force to be reckoned with. Malachi starts in control of Karak Drak in the giant home mountains. With Norskans to the west and east, Rats and Kislev to the south, and a whole host of demons to the north, there's no better testing ground for a genius engineer with a death wish. But that's enough about me, there are munitions to enhance and airships to fly. Many, many, many grudges to settle, and a whole buffet of exciting adventures to sink our teeth into. We might even meet a glorious death, but for now let's deal with Dungrut and learn more about Malachi. Malachi is a really interesting character. He mixes being a slayer and being an engineer oh, into a kooky little box. He's a bit of a fan favorite, but he wasn't featured in that many Games Workshop books. His playstyle is all around building a lot of artillery and missile units and pushing them to their limits. Malachi is kind of this ranged king of a character. He, he buffs artillery lines and he's really good at striking from a distance. Where he kind of falls down is in close range melee combat, where he can't really hold his own. You might say corner camping is a cowardly move, but I'm playing the waiting game. My cannons and gyrocopters have done some nice work, aided by Malachi's buffs. Gotrek and Felix are supporting the front line, and the Thunderers are picking off any upstarts getting too close. It's time for the main event. Let loose the spirit of Grungli. I can only give it basic orders and it doesn't stick around for long, not yet, but that's fine by me. Let's sit back, have a tea and a biscuit, and watch the fireworks. Tactical advantages abound, with the spirit of Grungni forever flying above us. Design insight shortly, but first, let's nose around. Ooh, look at that, we've got building options. Recruitment provides us with a limited number of units that we can recruit from anywhere on the campaign map. This also relates to any of our lords in the spirit of Grungni's radius. Compartments aid in things like campaign movement, production, recruitment slots, unit experience, army upkeep, and increasing the time the spirit of Grungni sticks around in battle. The spirit of Grungni is tied to Malachi and gives him an immense advantage on the campaign map as well as in combat used at the right moment, and the spirit can mean the difference between victory or defeat. So the spirit of Grungni is kind of this call-in power that we've never really had in Total War Warhammer before. The spirit of Grungni forgoes the weakness of the Thunder Barge, which is getting into position. The spirit can drop in at any place and unleash hell. Malachi will speak to the Dwarf players that are looking for something a little bit new. A lot of our existing characters don't have that same pushing their boundaries and adventiveness that comes with him. Also, these adventures are really thematic. To fulfill the fantasy of a Slayer, Malachi can set out on epic adventures which are not to five. But the constant pull of machinery is the lifeblood of any true Dowie, and Malachi has perfectly married these two vital parts of himself. To that end, adventures are paired with a type of unit. These units are highly recommended to use during the related adventure because when the axes are drawn, they'll give us a significant tactical advantage. We can use the higher adventure units mechanic to recruit a limited number of these units, even if we haven't unlocked them via the buildings tree. Every adventure has six independent objectives to complete, each upgrading the associated unit differently, but only three objectives are required to unlock the legendary battle. The more we complete, the stronger our unit becomes. Malachi's campaign really plays into the adventures he had with Gotrek and Felix. You'll be going around the world, collecting technologies and fighting these awesome battles. And as part of that, we incentivize you to upgrade some units which will be pretty pivotal in the success in taking on that beast. Malachi is different from other Slayers. Most of them are desperate to fulfill their oath. He's got some things to tinker with before that. 
As I've completed all six objectives ever the overachiever, the legendary battle is unlocked. Before we go face our potential death, let's have a wee peek at the changes to the Dowie tech tree. Ah, I love trees, and now we've got two distinctive ones, guilds and clans. As we've been playing more aggressively, I've gone full throttle into the clans tree to give us every edge when the grudges start grudging. Check out the blog to see the full changes to the dwarf factions, or stick around and watch me shoot this cannon. Oh, silly elves, you can't beat my turtle formation. Ah, they're cavalry sneakily trying to get to our cannons. Thankfully, we have a shield of miners. Uh, no, you're not supposed to go behind the miners. I'm going to pretend that's not happening and summon the spirit of Grungni. Yep, I've, uh, I've already dropped the ball here. These horses aren't going down. Maybe the Thunderers can help. It could be worse, at least the dragons aren't here. Yeah, there they are. Yeah, there they are. You know what? This is fine. We've still got one cannon. We only need one. I hope. Nothing can stop us! Except the dragons. Get them, Felix. Right, well, that could have gone worse, but with the dragons dealt with, we're on the cusp of victory. One adventure down. A close victory means more adventures to fulfill my oath. Jamek Grimbrow, our demon slayer lord, has already started around a fisty cuffs with the Chaos Dwarf, so I suppose I'll start working on the Dreadquake Destruction Adventure. And, as I started a new adventure, that associated unit becomes open to me through the Higher Adventures unit tab. Malachi's fantasy is one of really two halves. He's a slayer, but he's also this eccentric genius engineer. So, for players who want to tinker with all various types of dwarf technology whilst also adhering to the strict rules of the Slayer Oath, this is your guy. I haven't mentioned it up till now, but our more perceptive viewers would have noticed the different numbers over the heads of characters and settlements. No, we're not ranking them, though Malachi's an obvious 10. This is the update to the grudge system. We wanted the grudge system to play a bigger part in dwarf campaigns and have a larger impact. To achieve this, grudges now work over a cycle of 10 turns called the Age of Reckoning. The number looming menacingly over a character's head indicates how many grudges they've incurred. Throughout the 10 turn cycle, we want to build the highest number possible. The more grudges settled, the better our potential rewards in both campaign buffs and access to grudge settler units will be. Grudges can be incurred by different means. Someone occupying a dwarven settlement that isn't a dwarf. Trespassing. Raiding. Attacking. Looking at me funny. Asking annoying questions. Not saying thank you when I hold the door open for you last Thursday, Andrew. And factions alliances. Anything and everything goes in the book. Speaking of, the book's had a small makeover. It now has tabs. Let's click through them. Legendary grudges are long-term campaign goals offering powerful rewards. Completing Retake the Realms, for example, gives you a hefty chunk of settled grudges and reopens the underway, allowing quick and easy passage around the region. In the Legendary Lords tab, we can compare our settled grudges against our fellow Dowie and, if formidable enough, confederate them. Finally, the Grudge Settlers tab gives us an overview of all the Grudge Settler units and at what grudge level they're unlocked. Once an Age of Reckoning is done, you have the choice to take a 10 turn break from grudging or immediately jump back in right in wrongs. We took a look at the grudge mechanic and thought the flavour was there, but the gameplay was a little stagnant. So we've added some more dynamism to how grudges are distributed, so you can always see who needs a, a grudging. Malachi's glorious death eludes him still, but perhaps not for much longer. We've stress tested our gyrocopters and tweaked them silly. We're now ready to face the Dawizar in a battle that will no doubt be remembered in song. Or at least interpretive dance. Time to prove these Hashut worshipping fiends are no match for a true Dowie's engineering prowess. 
We'll close the gap and try to tease them forward with sporadic cannon fire. But the Dawi Zar are as stubborn as their inventions are ugly, and they hold steadfast for reinforcements. The convoys arrived, so we'll head them off with our gyrocopters. You know what, that's enough waiting. Our Doom Seekers will lead the charge. So Doom Seekers are kind of like this elite Slayer unit thing, aspiring champions, but on the Dwarf roster, they have this ability where if you push the button, they just spin around and deal loads and loads of damage. So with their dual chain axes, they're really going to cause some havoc. Spinning, that's a good trick. One our Dragon Slayer hero unfortunately can't employ against such a massive foe. This unbreakable anti-large melee expert is committed only to a glorious death. But not today. Not with the Demon Slayer on the prowl. Demon Slayers are kind of like these chaff blender units. And what we mean by that is they're great at taking out large groups of condensed infantry. Oh, look out, here comes Garagrim Iron Fist, your legendary hero. My favourite thing about Garagrim Iron Fist is that his axes are chained to his arms so he doesn't lose them. An anti-infantry melee specialist, Garagrim's quite fast. For a dwarf. The front line's getting a little hot for the Thunderers. We'll pull them back to give them some breathing room. Thunderers are dwarfs that are trained in the use of firearms. Thunderers have been in the game since Warhammer 1, but now we're introducing a weapon option that allows them to take the Grudge Raker, which is a type of shotgun. Away from the bulk of the battle, our gyrocopters and the spirit make short work of the incoming reinforcements. A good thing too, because we've just unleashed the Slayer Pirates. Slayer Pirates were first introduced in Dogs of War and later in Storm of Chaos. They're kind of these cutlass and pistol-wielding badasses that, uh, that drink rum filled with gunpowder and iron filings, so uh, pretty, pretty sus. We didn't quite manage to catch the train. I don't mean, that's not a pun. And it's wrecking havoc with the Thunderers. Time for the Goblin Hewer. The Goblin Hewer is a spinning construction of death and mayhem that fires axes at rapid succession at the enemies. Once the ammunition has all been depleted though, it's also crewed by slayers, which then run headlong into the battle. With the Hewer's help, we've managed to pull the Grim Delvers back. Add a shanty from the long drong slayer pirates. And a war cry from the Brotherhood of Grimnir. And the front line is all but secure. Let's unleash the Thunder Barge. The Thunder Barge is the ultimate expression of Dwarven air power. It's got two cannons, it's got loads of gunners on it, it's got four bomb bays, and it's also got a giant harpoon that it can fire from the main balloon part. It is insane, and it's really going to change the face of the Dwarf playstyle. Demon-infused war machines. Foul has shut magic. Pathetic. Look how our corrupted cousins flee before the might of Malachi McKyson. I ugly! Alas, our victory falls hollow for the master of innovation. A glorious death has escaped Malachi once more and we can only curse our exceptional talent for this grave inju- <gasps> What's this? Could it be? Was this the last of Malachi McKyson's adventures? Has our hero met the glorious end he has so desperately sought? Or will you see just how far his inventions will take him? Thoughts? Comments? Biscuits? Share them below or follow our links to Wishlist now.